Hi everyone, and welcome to the devotional series, Connecting Deeply with God Through Music, where I talk about hymns and their backstories and um, share recordings of those hymns. Um, this is going to be the last uh, video of this series since it's the last week in Lent, um, but I might do some similar videos and devotions in the future, so uh, stay on the lookout for those. Um, this week we're going to talk about In the Garden, also called I Come to the Garden Alone. And um, in the past, uh, a lot of the videos I've talked mainly about the history of the hymn, and I'm going to briefly go through that today, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about my opinion of the hymn, since it's actually a controversial hymn, which I wasn't aware of before. I um, learned a little bit more about it, so that's going to be what I'm talking about today. In the Garden was written by C. Austin Miles, a former pharmacist turned gospel writer. He attended the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy and the University of Philadelphia. Miles wrote his first gospel song in 1892. He became editor and manager of the Hall Mack Publishing Company and served them for 37 years. In the Garden is a surprising polarizing song. While one of my favorite hymns, In the Garden is not recognized as a religious song by many. In fact, I noticed that our current Evangelical Lutheran worship hymnal, the red one, does not include In the Garden, nor does the previous Lutheran hymnal, the Lutheran Book of Worship. Why the controversy? The answer may lie within the text. According to Miles, the text too in the garden was inspired by his favorite Bible chapter, John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, as well as a vision he experienced while working in this dark room. In Miles' own words, one day in March, 1912, I drew my Bible toward me and opened up my favorite chapter, John 20. That meaning of Jesus and Mary Magdalene had lost none of its power to charm. As I read it that day, I seemed to be part of the scene I became a silent witness to that dramatic moment in Mary's life when she knelt before her Lord and cried, Rabboni. My hands are resting in the Bible while I stared at the light blue wall. As the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of a garden, looking down a gently winding path shaded by olive branches. The author, Miles, then describes the arrival of Mary, Peter, and John as they gathered at the tomb, followed by the appearance of Jesus. I awakened in full light, gripping the Bible, with muscles tense and nerves vibrating. Under the inspiration of this vision, I wrote as quickly as the words could be formed, the poem exactly as it has appeared. The first aspect of the song people find issue with is the first person language. Some believe that such a one-sided perspective is not appropriate for a communal song. However, isn't worship a personal experience as well? Yes, we come together as a community, but we all take away something as individuals from our worship experience. And if we only successfully worship together with more communal songs, then hit classics like Blessed Assurance, I Love to Tell a Story, Were You There, Abide With Me, and many others were uh, told in a first person narrative would not be appropriate either <clears throat> if we were to you know, follow those rules. Some people also find issue with the overly embellished descriptions of the atmosphere as well. The lyrics have even been called erratic, almost like a love song. But are we not supposed to feel beauty when experiencing an intense moment with God? This is also not the first time such flowery speech has occurred in a hymn. Take morning has broken, for example. Morning has broken, like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken, like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning. Praise for them springing, fresh from the world etc. While written in 1931, later than in the garden, Morning Has Broken has similarly poetic lyrics, but is still considered a credible hymn religious song. The last issue some people have within the garden lies within the lyric, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Some, criti some criticize this as a selfish expression. How can we sing about a relationship with the Lord that no one else has experienced? What makes our experience so special? However, according to the author himself, In the Garden is a song about Mary Magdalene encountering the risen Christ near the empty tomb. So none other in this case could be or would be about the joy of being the first witness of the, uh, to the resurrection of Jesus. And even without the author's context, though, this lyric can still be appropriate. Each person's experience with God is different from another person. So I do not fully know your personal experience with God, and you do not fully know mine. <clears throat> With all this being said, a song's interpretation is personal. In the Garden uh, feels appropriately religious to me, but it may not to you. And that's fine. That is why the subjectiveness of music is so fun. 
I encourage everyone to discuss this song and any other songs that speak to you. And um, that's just one of the very fun things about music is being able to discuss how you feel about music and what music means to you. So here's In the Garden. <laughs> 